intense question, I know. If they wanted to start finding themselves, whether it be um, th- getting rid of a bad relationship or simply finding themselves, you know, so many women have uh, grown children that are they're empty nesters now, and some of my coaching clients, that's when they really are searching. They're searching for answers. They're searching for purpose. What would be some advice that you'd give to a woman like that? Well, my suggestion, um, I never like to give direct advice because everybody's different, but my suggestion to women that are going through transition, if you like, because we do go through transition at certain periods in our lives, And my suggestion would be that, first of all, you decide what it is you actually want your life to look like. So sit down and write. If you could have your ideal life, remember we're doing sort of a, if you like, go back to your childhood days when you used to pretend about things. And write down your ideal life. What would it look like? You know, what would you do if you got up in the morning? How would your day look? What would you be working at? If you do that to start with, at least you know what you want. And then you decide what it is you don't want. I know that sounds a bit contrary, but if you don't know what you want and then you don't know what you don't want, it's very challenging to be able to make the changes. I didn't really, I was fumbling. I have to be honest with you. I didn't know how to do this at the time. Nobody um, instructed me how to do this kind of thing. I did go to therapy at one point because I needed to get straight with my head. But um, that was not really to do with me. That was to do with something I was going through in my family. So I would really suggest to women that you decide what it is you want in your life, and especially with relationships. If you are getting divorced, if you are single, or even if you're married, don't say yes to everything. Decide what you want in a relationship. What are your 10 non-negotiables? Now, I didn't know all of this. By the way, I did train eventually as a relationship coach as well. But um, decide what your non-negotiables are with a relationship. So one of mine, for instance, would be that if somebody smokes, no way. I wouldn't be around somebody that smokes. Mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't know how to communicate, no way. So that's one of the things that broke my marriage up. So... You know, when you ask yourself what it is you really want and you lay out that picture so you can see it, and I mean write it out. Don't do it in your head because in your head doesn't count. It'll just go round and round and round and nothing will happen. And then when you look at the ideal picture, ask yourself what is one step you can take to start making the change. If you're not happy in the situation you're in, look, I'm 75. I'm starting a new business. Why am I doing that? Because I don't really coach people full-time anymore. I still do hypnotherapy with people if they want it. But I wanted something else in my life. So do you think it was a little scary to start something new at 75? (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) But I also knew that I had to branch out. So think about it from that point of view. How do you want your ideal life to look? What are your non-negotiables when it comes to relationships? And that means any kind of relationship, actually, but especially a relationship with a partner. Um, What is it you don't want in life? And just jot a few things down. You know, it's a bit like making the opposite of a bucket list. (laughs) the most important aspect of that is writing the ideal life vision right exactly if you can do that if women can do that and then look at do you like where you are is this how you want your life to be for the rest of your life are you happy doing what you're doing then you'll give yourself some answers Never, ever forget to ask yourself questions 
because we often don't ask ourselves the right questions. And when we do that, we just stay stuck wherever we are. Uh, Does that answer the question? Yes, I, I love that. Ask yourself questions. I'm, I'm taking notes. You know, the way that I was taught to coach was uh, by asking a bunch of questions and creating a vision story for my clients. Right. And that's exactly what you just said. Right, except that the way I was taught to coach was I don't tell people what they should do. I ask right. them questions so they reach their own answers. And then if they can't reach the answer, then we will brainstorm it. Right. I was very fortunate. I trained under Thomas Leonard, who was the granddaddy of coaching. And unfortunately, he died way too young. <laughs> and his answer always was, what is your big why? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to have the life you want? Why do you want to do what you're doing? Why do you want to live this way? What, he, and he kept saying, ask yourself why until there are no more whys. And one of the reasons why I decided to go into a third business, which actually does somewhat go with coaching because it's about client retention and um, was because I have six grandchildren. I want to be able to do things with them and to do the kind of things I want to do with them cost money. <laughs> <laughs> and so I decided to go into something very, very different. So ask yourself why, when you write that vision, why is why is it that vision that you want? What is it in that vision that you really want that will motivate you to keep moving forward? Your why is what will motivate you to keep moving forward. Very good. Very good. So Well that you know, that's the truth. It is, it is. Because if you have no why, you really have no reason to get up in the morning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing I would suggest to people is, women especially, when you open your eyes in the morning, lay there for a few seconds and ask yourself how you want your day to be on an emotional level. How do you want to feel that day? I get up in the morning and I say, okay, what is today? Hypothetically, let's say today is Monday. I have a whole week ahead of me. I have very many things I need to do. And how do I want to feel today? I want to feel motivated. I want to feel happy. I want to feel energized. And then get out of bed. Mm -hmm. If you slip back during the day and you find yourself getting frustrated or impatient or whatever it might be, stop for a second and ask yourself, what was it you decided to feel like at the beginning of your day? Mm. And then ask yourself if you can move from that frustrated place back to where you really want to, to have your day. Very good. Very good. That's, that's some very good advice. I really like you. I think you're a, a splendid person. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you're welcome. So, um, I'm going to ask you another question. You know, in, in my lifetime, I have met a lot of people that are searchers, that look for answers, that travel, that are searchers. And then there's people that aren't, that are complacent, that are happy exactly where they are, that don't embrace change. What do you think makes the difference in a person? Well, I think when you don't, one of the things I didn't know when I was, let's say, in my 40s and even in my 50s to some extent, I didn't know that I hadn't dealt with my past. I, I was brought up in a very abusive family. And so what you tend to do is you tend to be in denial and you push everything away because it's easier to deal with, to do with that than it is to deal with the feelings. So... 
what you tend to do and what I tended to do, I'll talk about me because it really, I don't want to put this on other people. I became a shopaholic, I, or, which meant that all I did was ever, you know, I didn't need things. I just wanted them. And I didn't realize for a long time that I wanted them because that was what made me feel good. Right. So I was always searching for something to make me feel good. And for me, that was going shopping, buying a new dress, buying new shoes, buying whatever. Of course, it also got me into financial trouble eventually. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I started realizing that um, that was why I was doing what I was doing, um, I started working on the feelings from the past. And I stopped searching. And I stopped doing things I didn't use the word I want, I only use the word I need. So if I was to go out now and go to a store, which by the way, I hate, I hate shopping, <laughs> but that's beside the point, um, I would look at clothes and say, okay, do I need this or do I want this? Well, I want it. Okay, then you don't need it. <laughs> and I would walk away. Very good. So, and you can do that with all areas of your life. Do I want this or do I need this? Well, I don't need it. You know, that's like, that's a bit like saying when you go to the market, do do I need strawberries or do I want strawberries? No, I want strawberries. Do I need them? No. And that's a very, obviously that's a bit to the nth degree, but that's what we tend to do. Men do it a slightly different way, but women do it by finding relationships. I did that in relationships. I thought the relationships that I chose after I got divorced were wonderful, only to find out that they weren't, because I didn't know that I had to look at my non-negotiables with relationships. And so I would get caught up in feeling good because I was in a relationship. Never mind how they treated me. Um, Mm. Not that I ever went into anything that was, you know, um, physically abusive, but verbally, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't until a lot later when I did the work for myself that I realized that if I kept doing that, (laughs) I was never going to be where I wanted to be. So I finally... You know, did the growth work. I did it with help. I always had a coach. A good coach will have a coach. And I did a lot of hypnosis as well because working with a hypnotherapist meant, and I don't mean self-hypnosis because it's not quite the same. Working with a hypnotherapist meant that I could um, achieve what I wanted to achieve faster because we were dealing directly with the subconscious. And um, and so that's how I got to where I was. You use relationships, you use food, you use shopping. It's addiction, basically. Right. And you use and you use those things to fill yourself up. Right. When I when I stopped doing that, I found who I was. Very good. You, our theories are so similar. Um, In my book, Devolution, the Evolution and Revolution of the Diva, one of the things that I say is to not be afraid to take a good hard look at yourself. And so many times we are our own worst critics. On the outside, we tend to focus on our appearance so much more than our souls and our spirit and whatever it is. And I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in what's going on on the outside of us that the inside of us suffers. And that's when we allow those abusive relationships. We allow those um, bad addictions to come into play because we're not in touch with who we are. And it's it's sad, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. It certainly is. Yeah. So, you know, and one of one of the things I, I heard this a long time ago, and of course it's true. 
Your life on the outside represents what you are on the inside. 